Hi, I'm Tracy Watts. Welcome to Mercer Health News. My guest today is Hervé Balzano. Hervé is the president of Mercer's health business and our global leader for Mercer Marsh Benefits. Hi, Hervé. Thank you for being here today. Hi, Tracy. Today, we will be sharing Mercer's global perspective on health benefits. So just to set the stage for this, a multinational corporation is a business that owns and controls assets in two or more countries. The concept actually goes back to the 1930s and 40s, but the period since 1990 has really been something of a golden age for multinationals. So, Airbay, our audience are primarily benefit leaders based here in the U.S., many of which now have global responsibilities. So will you please share your perspective on how global benefits have changed over the past five to 10 years? Sure, Tracy, and thank you for inviting me. As you said, I've worked globally across the health and benefits industry, 25 years already, including leadership roles within AXA in France, the US and the UK. And I can tell the industry landscape has really changed a lot since then. When I started, the focus was about local benefits, employee retention, medical inflation, cost control, and of course, expatriate benefits package for large multinationals. But the world has changed quickly. Could you imagine that 10 years ago, two thirds of the top 500 fortune companies were from the US? Now it's less than half, as we see many more companies headquartered in Europe, Asia, and even more recently, the Middle East. And these multinationals are no longer solving problems country by country. They think more globally, holistically. They are increasingly focused on having inclusive benefits throughout company, offering mental health solutions, managing risks, costs, being digitally enabled, flexible. And this is only going to increase even more as technologies evolve and the world becomes more globalized. So Tracy, welcome to the world of one-stop shop benefits, the world of real time and the power of the experience. Yeah, the scope and the expansion of that has just increased like crazy over the last couple of years. Um, but switching gears just a little bit, you know, healthcare is very much on the agenda for President Biden and the Congress. And so as someone who's worked globally for many years, what country or countries do you think does the best job providing health care? Who should the United States be paying attention to? This is a great question, Tracy. And of course, I wish it was that simple to say one country does it better than everywhere else. The truth is, Healthcare is still very local, and it's hard to find a true single payer system anywhere in the world. And to be honest, it's fair to say that no healthcare system is perfect. Ultimately, there are limits on healthcare supply, and every system tries to provide care in some manner, but also pulls different levers to regulate demand. If you take the example of France, which I know pretty well, Universal Social Security System, which was truly relevant when created post-World War II, is unfortunately not relevant anymore. I would say it's not sustainable anymore because of the financial, where you have more retired people now than active ones. It doesn't make any sense. The UK, two gears. You get the public se sector, but be ready to wait to get your appointment, or the private sector and be ready to spend some money to get your appointment. That's why employers are playing a very significant role, designing robust benefits program, protecting their employees, even if the public healthcare system is not strong. The focus should be to ensure benefits are well rounded and meet the needs of the employee's population. And even more important, you have to be aware of what employees value the most. And of course, partnering with government to make the most of tax incentives to complement benefit systems. Um, so you got my attention with the comment on tax in incentives. Will you just say a little bit more about that? How do the tax incentives typically work in those countries? Are they corporate tax incentives? Yeah, they are mostly corporate tax incentives. And this is why it works pretty well because then you get this uh, medical plans through employer sponsored and it becomes almost mandatory because every single employer to get the tax incentive will implement 
uh, a medical scheme for their employees, which is a great way to uh, at least be sure that uh, every single employee will be uh, covered. So that's helpful. That's you know similar here in the United States as well. Um, I also loved the comment that you made about healthcare being very local, which of course is true here in the U.S. and and even more so, um, you know, as our uh, benefit leaders are managing global benefits. So it is indeed you know a big challenge. Um, so I have to ask you before I let you go, what is your best advice for U.S.-based global benefit leaders? Uh, again, a great question, Tracy. I mean, my advice is always the same. It's all about collaboration. It's all about working together with your local HR teams and also to partner with us at Mercer to help find the best solutions for you and your employees. Then it's about being transparent with your employees. Communication is everything. You could have the best restaurant in the world, and I'm not saying that lightly because I'm French, but if people don't know where you are or that you exist, no one will come in to test your food. So to achieve this, make the most of the digital tools and navigators, like uh, we have Darwin as a great example, to ensure your program are effective, well understood, and meeting your employees' needs. So great advice, collaboration, transparency and communication, and definitely leveraging digital tools. So everybody, thank you so much for speaking with me today. And thank all of you for joining us. We'll see you next time.